Okay, so today we're going to talk a bit about presets in Lightroom. And presets are excellent tools for really speeding up your workflow whenever you're editing photographs for yourself and you're starting to notice, hopefully at this point, having done several different edits for our class, that there's certain edits that will pop up more frequently than not uh, based on the subjects that you're photographing. So I have two photo shoots pulled up here in my default my default catalog. I have some portraits that I took of photo students last year. Um, on Halloween at the Lincoln Park Conservatory. And I also have a shoot uh, imported, which is a family photo shoot that I did just um, a week and a half ago. And this is uh, taken during the fall in Chicago with um, you know beautiful autumn trees and beautiful colors here. Now, um, since I have all of these pulled in. I'm actually going to start with the uh, Lincoln Park Conservatory portraits, um, as you can see here. And I'm going to go hop into my uh, develop module. You'll notice I have both um, images of plant life and uh, trees and whatnot. And I also have um, some portraits that I took. I have I have not gone through and restarred these since the last uh, photo shoot, but we'll be looking at a few of the images of the um, the greenery around Lincoln uh, around the Lincoln Park Conservatory, as well as how this can be applied to portraiture. Uh, so I want to call your attention over here to this side, where there is a tab in your develop module called presets. Now Lightroom automatically comes with some presets. For example, uh, I can you know, just sort of hover over these and you can see the different things that the Lightroom built-in presets will do. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're great. Um, there's some creative ones in here as well, sort of your uh, Instagram filter light. And uh, there's some black and white presets as well. And uh, as I roll through these, you can tell that they're modifying the image pretty significantly. Now there's a lot of companies that will sell Lightroom presets online for photographers who aren't 100% sure how to make them or they want to photograph with um, a certain editing style. Uh, so there's a lot of presets are, that are for sale that you can easily install into Lightroom. Um, but a lot of photographers like to create their own presets because we realize we do a lot of the same things over and over again and this will ultimately save us time. So into my Lightroom catalog here I've actually imported all of my favorite presets for example a shadows plus 15, shadows plus 25, highlights minus 30, etc. And these are presets that I've actually built uh, to use with the editing strategies that I tend to use most frequently, whether I'm editing photos for myself or editing photos for the photo studio that I work alongside of. So you can see these are all built in. I've built some kind of moody filters because I did a photo shoot for a woman who makes jewelry and she really wanted the, this kind of moody filtered look. So I built uh, presets for her specifically. Um, yes, I did call this one stupid Instagram. I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking there, but uh, you know, it's okay to judge sometimes. So um, if I'm looking at this portrait, I'm going to, of course, always start with my uh, black and white point compensation. Now, your whites and your blacks are going to be specific for any given image set, so I wouldn't suggest building a preset specifically with your black and white point comp uh, compensation. However, if I notice that I tend to add um, 10 points of contrast to portraits, and I take out about 20 points of clarity each time I edit a portrait, that's a really great starting point to create a preset. So check this out. I'm not gonna move much further on this portrait just yet because I want to show you how you can create useful filter or useful presets that will help you in your editing workflow. So um, if I go over to my presets menu here on the left side of my screen, I can click this plus sign 
that says uh, create preset. And I could create a preset called contrast plus 10, clarity minus 20, because that's a very frequent uh, preset that I use for portrait editing. And then I can actually create a new group. If I go down to our group menu and hit new group, I can call this portrait starts. So if I create a new group of portrait starts specifically, what I'm going to do is make sure I select contrast and clarity and then I'll hit create and you're going to see I now have this window over here of portrait starts and contrast and clarity is in here. So next time I'm starting with a portrait, I'll be able to um, add that effect right away. So let's say I wanted to keep these three portraits. I can synchronize them, you know, with all of the different things that I've done. I think really just white and black point clipping, contrast, clarity. I need to get my lens corrections in there. So if I scroll down here to lens corrections, go to my profile, check those boxes. Um, that makes a huge difference. And maybe I want to desaturate some of my greens a little bit in the HSL window because those are pretty intense and casting a little bit of green onto her face. I can sync those, so color and lens corrections, and we'll be in a pretty good spot. So, however, if I want to go to a different, and I'll go ahead and star these ones since I've edited them. So if I want to go to maybe a different portrait, um, what this portrait starts makes really easy for me is the ability to take my whites. I'll first do my black and white point compensation. I always want to do this before I apply anything. And I'll apply my lens corrections. And then, um, you know, I'll probably take my highlights down because her sweater is really white here. Then under my portrait starts preset, I can simply click this contrast clarity preset and it adds it right in there for me. And I know that that's one that I'm using super frequently and it's great because I can even build presets for vignettes, for example, or for, you know, for portraits where I'll, you know, adjust the tone curve by adding some lights, some darks, pulling down the shadows for just a little bit more touch of contrast. Might be a little bit too much here. There we go. Yeah, that that's really nice. So this is sort of um, a brightening technique. So maybe what I'll do is add a preset under my portrait starts that's more of a tone curve start or tone curve start right there and I'll check none, but then I definitely want to check my tone curve. Cool. And then um, I can come down and add a vignette effect, which looks really nice with all of this greenery around her. Again, it's not calling attention to itself, which is great. Here's my before my kind of grayed out raw image, and here's my after really starting to pop. Um, I'll hit K, burn the highlights a little bit into the sweater. Now, if you notice that you use the K tool, the K brush quite a bit, and uh, let's say you want to do something extreme, like burn in the highlights quite a bit more, I can always take this down, and you know how it says burn highlights edited up here? I can also save my current settings as a new preset within my brush tools window. And I can call this one burn highlights. And then parentheses intense if I want. 
and utilize that one at any given time, which is double the strength of my uh, built-in Lightroom preset for highlights. So I have the ability to build presets for my brushes, and I have the ability to build presets over here in this preset window. And of course, I can always click that little bubble in the top right of my image, hold down that shift key on the same set of images. The lighting doesn't really change. Uh, across the set, I can hit synchronize and uh, essentially sync everything that I affected. Don't think I did sharpening, but here we go. Synchronize. And now all of these contain the same information as that first one. So similar to what we learned in our very first editing demo, but now getting started on my very first master image becomes a lot easier. And I'll go ahead and star that one as a one. And obviously some of them will end up being starred and some of them will not as I'm working through. And uh, I'll always want to, you know, for the other ones that I select from this set, I'll still want to burn in our whites here. And it looks like my burn highlights intense is still selected. So we get that nice contrast between her and the background. Now the interesting thing about photographing in uh, a lot of green space or in the, Lincoln Car in the Lincoln Park Conservatory, for example, where I was for these images, is we do have quite a bit of green stuff surrounding the person. And so uh, when we start talking about like what are people doing to create their Instagram filters or their moody filters, a lot of times those presets are a combination of adjustments in contrast and adjustments in terms of saturation. So you'll notice um, if I really desaturate my greens here, I'm starting to get that kind of grayed out effect that you see on a lot of Instagram profiles that take out the green. And interestingly, there's kind of a psychological reason for this, which is that our eyes are most sensitive to green light. And so if you do take down the greens, I don't recommend doing it this significantly necessarily, but if you do take out the greens quite dramatically, you're causing your viewer to really focus on the skin tones and um, the person or the subject, the portrait standing right in front of you. Um, so for example, if I wanted to build a preset out of this, I have my greens down 65, might take my yellows down 10, kind of add this sort of like desaturated thing going on. Um, burn in the front of the sweater here, just a touch. Um, and then what I can even do in my hue is I can pull my greens to more of the yellow side if I want to add a touch of warmth. I can pull my yellows over to the orange. It's affecting her hair a little bit more than I want. But um, ultimately, if I want to create a moody filter based off of this, what I might do is add a preset. And I'm gonna put this under my moody filters. I'm gonna call this desaturate greens and I'm only gonna select my color and I'm gonna select my tone curve because I've added those significant adjustments um, and then I'll add my contrast and clarity and maybe that will be the whole thing right here so I'll create that and it should pop up Cool, so now I've created this desaturate greens filter. Um, I could have selected the vignette along with it. I could have a whole preset section of just vignettes like I do over here. And that would be by selecting any edits that you make inside of your effects uh, post crop vignetting tab over here. So those would be the ones that you select. But this is super interesting because now that I've created um, essentially a filter with all of these different things going on, if I scroll over to one of my images of a super green plant, like this one, for example, I'll always start with my, um, my whites here and my 
blacks, pulling those in. I'm going to add a little bit more contrast. Maybe I'll add a touch of clarity because it's not a portrait and I want to emphasize the sharpness there. Pull down my highlights. Um, here's my tone curve start. I'll try that. Cool. And I have my vignette here under favorite. So I'll click on that strong and narrow vignette. I'm going to burn in the leaves here just a touch more with my new Burn Highlights Intense filter. I might crop that in just a touch, get rid of some of that extra space. And then check out what happens if I go down to my Moody filters and I add this Desaturate Greens. It makes this photo look like a, you know, a film processed image. It's a little bit sickly, I guess you could say, because it, it has the greens desaturated, the yellows are up a bit, but I can always come back into that HSL window and pull back in my um, greens and yellows however I want. But now that exists in there and is saved. Another interesting thing you can experiment with, especially if you're going for a more artistic approach to your photos and you want to give them a sort of otherworldly look or presence to them. Um, we'll just use this image of the flowers as an example. We'll start with my whites and find the black point here. I'm going to apply my lens corrections. And then I'm going to add a tiny bit of vignette. I'll control this one on my own here. And we'll add contrast by using our tone curve. Might have been a little bit too much here. Cool, so here's my before. Here's my after. I've really done a lot to reel in some of those tones here. Let's burn in these leaves in the background. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to punch up the contrast, pull down some highlights, and now we can really experiment within our HSL opportunities. <laughs> So if I go into my saturation tab, maybe I'll choose to pull down the saturation of my greens a little bit and the saturation of my yellows and maybe the saturation of my oranges. If I pull down my blues, I'm eliminating the spill from the outside light coming through the conservatory. And I've already done a lot of work as far as muting um, the uh, vibrancy of this picture. Uh, I also have the option of pulling my hues one way or another, as I showed you before. So if I wanted my greens to be a little bit more blue leaning, I could get them there. Or my greens to be a little bit more yellow leaning, I could get them there. And what I want to show you is this window that we haven't yet touched with any of our imagery called split toning. And this is the one that I mentioned that's a little bit more fun because you're actually adding a hue or desaturating uh, highlights or shadows specifically. So this is um, a more sophisticated, specific approach to what we're doing up here in our HSL window. So if I go to my highlights and I add a color, you'll notice that that purple color or that yellow color will become applied to all of the highlights in this piece. So maybe you guys who have seen this kind of look or effect on uh, Instagram or in your favorite filters app, um, you kind of have an idea of the direction where this is going. Uh, I find that adding too much to the highlights cause, calls attention to itself quite a bit. But if you work with the shadows, those darker areas that aren't quite as noticeable or bright, 
I find that you can do a lot more subtle things that really change the look and feel of the image. So like adding a little bit of purple or blue to the shadows, for example, kind of takes this picture into that otherworldly zone. So maybe I'll add a touch of purple to our shadows. Maybe I'll come back up here and uh, adjust our orange and maybe make the orange a little bit more red. And you can start to see with the high dynamic range included in a raw file, how much room there is to go from this to this, which has a totally different mood and tone based off of what I've done with my HSL and my split toning. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, how, how does this play out like in the real world? Well, uh, I just wrapped up an editing project where I was working with a series of photos for Northwestern University. And one of the really important things as far as my edit was to make sure that every photograph that I was editing had the exact same tone of purple. So I was working with the HSL window and a little bit of split toning and masking that in in order to make sure that each photograph going into this publication had the exact same quality of purple. So it's quite amazing what you can do in HSL and split toning uh, as you're working on creating presets or just working on color editing in your images, especially going into the final project, which is a bit more open-ended, there's a lot that you can do in these two windows. So I'm going to show you uh, by going into the library here a more practical um, example as well of how these presets work. And um, so this set of images has been culled and starred, edited, processed, and delivered to um, the client. And uh, I can pull up all of my rated images. First thing I did was um, cull down my set of 610 photos from our one hour shoot to just 62 and um, made sure that I have all of these starred. Cool. So, uh, and she's super, super cute in this little dress. But what helps me move more quickly through this whole edit is the ability to access in my develop module all of the presets that I've created because if I just click through them and then apply them to this first image in the set, I can essentially ensure that every single image taken under this given uh, these trees comes out exactly the same. So once I set that image as my master, I can go to sync and then check everything that I've done to create uh, this environment. And uh, it's not a lot, but it's enough to really help the portrait pop forward and the background to recede like it should. So if I walk through one of these um, with you guys here, come over to this uh, double starred image, I'll make a virtual copy of it. This is a really great way to make sure that you have your original edit, and then if you're going to try a different edit, you can always create a virtual copy and you'll have lots of space to experiment with a different editing style if you'd like. I'm going to reset this one. So that's kind of our starting point. And so I'll start with my white and my blacks. There's that little bit of highlight in the sky but I'll get that with a little uh, mask. I can come down to those portrait starts. My tone curve start. Kind of seem to punch it up a bit. I might add a tiny bit of exposure by pulling my histogram over, which is something that 
you can always do to increase the lightness if you slightly underexposed. In this case, I'm only pushing it up about a third of a stop, plus 0.28. Um, you never want to have to push exposure one or two stops over, otherwise your image will start degrading, it'll start to look a little bit muddy. It is definitely not ideal. Um, I'll pull up my temperature a bit, kind of warm this image up, especially if I'm going to be I'll take out some highlights here, uh, especially if I'm gonna be pulling out some of the colors in my HSL window. So let's pull out a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow. And I'll pull my yellow over to orange so those golden rods are like a little bit less bright and in your face and they mesh in. You know, as I'm working with this, I'm also being very conscious of uh, their skin tones and making sure that that looks correct. It was a little bit chilly, so sometimes if you're photographing on a chillier day, you can pull out a little bit of purple and magenta, which will tend to be in the skin. Um, but I want to make sure that their skin tone looks accurate to how it actually is in real life. Apply my lens corrections. And I have this vertical pole in the background. I know this isn't an architectural image, but I am going to rotate it and constrain my crop here so that feels a little bit more solid. And then I can come up and add my vignette um, that I already have a preset for. So that makes my life a little easier. I'll pull up exposure just a tiny, tiny bit to compensate grab my burn highlights intense. I probably just need the regular burn highlights and I can burn in her shirt, which is a, a lighter cream color and this dress here and um, pull in just a touch more of the temperature here. And all of a sudden, I think I probably edited it pretty closely to my original. It looks like I have a little bit of a crop on there, which I can also do, but um, these color edits can really make a huge difference as far as how your final image looks as you're working through your edit. Awesome. So I hope that that's helpful. Uh, as you start to create your own sets of presets based on what you're editing, whether it's portraits, architecture, you want to create some interesting moody filters and try applying them to various scenes and different colors. Uh, and then, of course, starting to create presets uh, within your brush menu, your mask menu. It is a huge, huge help um, and good luck implementing these tools in your next projects.